Gary's Mod has been through an insane amount of changes over the years. It started back in 2004 as a Half-Life 2 mod where you could play with ragdolls and build the, the worst car ever, and somehow ended up as one of the most popular PC games that has ever existed. While a lot of people might attribute that success to the fact that it's so good, or the fact that there's so much content, I think the bulk of Gary's Mod success comes from the fact that it's dirt cheap. For the price of three, uh, maybe four McDonald's chicken sandwiches, you can get one of the greatest sandbox games of all time, a bunch of free Half-Life 2 assets, and access to a seemingly endless amount of user-generated mods, maps, and add-ons. There's honestly probably no better deal in gaming, and I think it's one of the main reasons Gary's Mod has remained so relevant even 20 years after it first released. While that's all cool, and I commend Gary for keeping the game the same price as it was at launch, when I was a kid, I didn't have $10. In fact, I didn't have any dollars. So what do you do when you're a young ass jit who wants to play Gmod, but there's an impenetrable $10 wall blocking your path? You do what anyone would do, and turn to bootlegs. Honestly, it's kind of criminal just how many hours I spent playing cracked bootleg versions of Gary's Mod, and by criminal, I mean it was it was probably like literally, literally against the law. Some of the best memories I ever made in Gary's Mod were thanks to pirated copies of the game, and while I obviously own the game legally now, I do kind of miss having to scour the internet for copies of Gmod that, looking back, probably had like four different kinds of viruses in them. The best part about them is that they usually came with a bunch of different maps and add-ons that were all handpicked by whoever made the bootleg. So with each version you downloaded, you got a handcrafted selection of popular, cool add-ons that were always really fun to play around with. It wasn't just like you downloaded a bunch of random add-ons from the Steam Workshop. It was like someone curated a custom Gmod experience specifically for you to enjoy, which was honestly just really fun. Keep in mind, all this happened like 10 years ago, so those copies of Gary's Mod are probably now all completely obsolete. They're full of old game modes, old maps, and old add-ons that nobody has played with in over a decade, which made me a little bit sad. But then I realized that this is the internet, and 10 years really isn't that long of a time, and there's a good chance that those old pirated versions of Gary's Mod still exist somewhere. So today, I decided that I would hunt the internet for those old, illegal copies of Gmod, just to see if they're as cool as I remember, and also because I'm kind of curious about what kind of lost add-ons and forgotten maps might be hiding inside of them. Equipped with a web browser and also Windows antivirus, today we're taking a trip down memory lane to explore some weird, old, illegal versions of Gary's Mod. I decided I would have the best luck finding interesting versions of the game if I looked for ones made by the group of people who pirate Gary's Mod the most. Russians. Say what you will about how wrong it was for me to make that generalization, but that did help lead me to find a pretty cool old cracked copy of Gmod 10. Believe it or not, this version was actually sold physically in stores in Russia, and the box art looks like this. Before I actually opened the EXE, I decided to take a peek over to the screenshots folder just to see what was in there. What I found was a bunch of old ass pictures taken by whoever had put the build together in the first place, all dated June 10th, 2007. Most of these were just different candid pictures of maps, but they were still pretty cool to see. One of them was a picture of a certain symbol that I probably cannot show you on YouTube, made exclusively out of Combine Elites. So, cool. Upon installing and opening the game, I was greeted with a copy of Gary's Mod 10 that had a number of pre-installed add-ons and a handful of pre-installed maps. Let's start with the first map, SG underscore Trend. SG Trend, at first glance, is this weird Fulbright version of GM Construct that is somehow even more basic than the actual GM Construct. There's a really bad looking pool, a handful of errors that I have no idea what could be, and also this weird timeout box thing, which I assume was a place that admins could put players who were griefing or causing trouble before admin add-ons became a thing. Moving on to the interior, there's this janky ass keypad that looks to be the only way to get inside this building, but there is zero indication as to what the code is, and every time you're into the wrong one, it straight up just kills you. So I guess I'm not getting in that way because I refuse to cheat by just no clipping through this door. I built these janky ass stairs to get up onto the roof where I found a way inside that didn't require no clipping. What I found was this very odd apartment type thing, which I think is meant to be some kind of admin house, because it lets me actually change the password to the keypad from here, and also open this door that's called Evil Door. As it turned out though, what was behind that door was not evil at all, and was in fact a huge selection of cars. Cars that come from a pre-installed add-on called Gary's Mod on Wheels, which if I'm not mistaken is actually one of the oldest add-ons in Gary's Mod. 
There was a whole lineup of these cool ass ATVs, some Subarus, some Bugattis, and a a Toyota Hilux for some reason. I don't I don't know I don't know why this is here. Getting in the cars, you'll notice one that they have a stupidly detailed interior, and that two, they drive like complete poop. They're all just reskins of the default Half-Life 2 Jeep, but they are pretty cool for what they are, and again, there is a weird amount of detail put into these things. All of the cars are locked to first person mode, with the exception of the Bugattis, which let you drive in third person, I guess. So, yeah, what's the color of my Bugatti? Uh, red and blue. And also, if I, if I use the Gmod color tool, I can make it yellow. I actually really couldn't find a lot of information about SG Trend online, but considering this build of Gmod was put together around July 2007, I'd say that this build, and this map specifically, are remnants of some of the earliest car communities to exist in Gmod, which is pretty awesome to be able to play around with, even though this map looks like complete butt. There's a little bit more to this map, like these weird garage things, but that's mostly it, so let's move on to another one. GP Highway Fix is a giant racetrack with some cars in it. That's, I mean, that's really it. It's a racetrack that you're meant to use Half-Life 2 Jeeps on, but I say, I say no, and I race my awesome ass McLaren instead. GP Airboat Race is the exact same thing, but with airboats, and also it's very dark. Next we have GMPS Ski, which seems to be a very early version of Sled Build, in which you build a sled out of Gary's Mod Props and race down a hill. I don't have time to do that though, so I'm just going to drive a giant Russian dump truck down it. Yeah. Finally, there's GMPS Trains V2, which is a map I actually somewhat remember from way back in the day. There's a bunch of train tracks that go all the way to the map limit, and also this little platform where you can spawn train pieces. Uh, I'll be honest and say I never knew how the hell you are supposed to make a train out of these things, and I honestly still really don't. But I think most people played on this map simply because it was really big, and also a little bit more interesting than the default flat grass. I tried my best to find a video of someone actually getting a train up and running on this map, but I honestly... I just could not. I did, however, find a video of this guy flying around the spaceship on this map, and then getting out and murdering a bunch of Teletubbies with a laser gun, so hopefully hopefully that makes up for it. I knew this was the last custom map that the build had, so real quick I decided to check if there were any more add-ons beside the car add-on installed, and to my surprise I found this weird NPC spawner add-on. It's not super interesting, but it spawns different enemy NPCs at a fixed rate, and it's a pretty useful tool that you could probably use to make some cool combat scenarios. Also, thanks to this add-on, I realized that in this version of the game, all of the NPCs speak Russian, so when you kill Alex, she sounds like this. I guess that's it. Maybe it was a little disappointing, but that's really all this version of Gmod had to offer. I do kind of wish there were some more... Some more map... Wait a minute. Browse all? <laughs> oh my god. So... As it turns out, there are way more than just five custom maps in this build of Gary's Mod. There's actually like 50 custom maps, all created prior to July 2007. I can't possibly show you all of them in this video, but it was insane just how many cool maps were in this build of the game. A large amount of them seemed to be Half-Life 2 deathmatch maps, which is pretty cool, because these were probably made pretty soon after Half-Life 2 came out. There's an insane amount of Source Engine and Gary's Mod history in each and every one of these maps, and there's no doubt in my mind that at least some of these would probably be completely lost if they weren't already immortalized by this bootleg version of the game. Again, I can't stress just how many different maps there were, and how much history is ingrained into each and every single one. This weird map archive was probably the coolest part of this entire thing, and I almost didn't even realize it was here. Let me know in the comments if you recognize any of these maps from back in the day, because some of these are kind of cool. I honestly had some of the most fun I've had in Gmod in a while, just clicking on these random ass maps and fantasizing about what kind of wacky shenanigans went down on them back in the day. While this copy of Gmod maybe wasn't exciting as I wanted it to be at first, being able to walk through what is essentially a 2007 Gmod museum was actually really really cool, and I'm glad I downloaded this, this insane ass thing. They even had this map, which, you know what, I'm not even gonna make a joke about because that was a national tragedy and there was nothing funny about it. Anyways, crashing on over to the next build, we have yet another copy of Gary's Mod 10, this time put together by Digital Zone, who were a pretty prolific team of people who distributed pirated copies of Valve games. You might know them from their pirated version of Counter-Strike 1.6, which is probably one of the most downloaded bootlegs ever released. And as cool as that little piece of lore is, and as awesome as the installer for this build was, there actually wasn't anything too crazy inside of it. It's a pretty bare-bones version of Gary's Mod 10, complete with all the default assets. 
The one unique part about it is that it has a new game mode and new map called GMDM, which stands for Gary's Mod Deathmatch. From what I can tell, it was a very rudimentary attempt by Gary Newman to recreate the multiplayer mode from Half-Life Deathmatch inside of Gary's Mod 10. Judging by the state of the maps and the clearly placeholder assets and weapons, it didn't seem to get very far. This fizz gun slash glue on gun thing is really hilarious though, and I kind of wish I could use this weapon in Sandbox. There's not much to say about this, but it's kind of funny that the Gary's Mod community never really settled on one specific deathmatch game mode. There's been countless attempts to bring deathmatch over to Gmod since like 2006, and none of them ever really seemed to stick. Who knows if GMDM would have stuck around had Gary actually completed it. I mean, I mean it wouldn't, it, it, would, it definitely would not have, but it's fun to imagine. It's pretty hilarious that Gary Newman has remade Half-Life Deathmatch like three different times now. Once in Gary's mod, once in the Unreal Engine version of Sandbox, and yet again in the Source 2 version of Sandbox. Who the hell is this man, and why is he so obsessed with remaking Half-Life Deathmatch? Next up, we have a Mystery Meet Gmod build called R. Gary's GCF Gmod. The description for this one says it's both Gmod 10 and Gmod 11, so who knows which one it really is. This is a pirated build that was floating around in 2011, and it seems like it was heavily modified by whoever created it. Weirdly, I think this is the only build that my OS detected as having a virus in it, and for that reason I had to play it on a very old laptop so that Windows Defender would stop deleting the files, so please excuse the footage looking like complete poop. Uh, my bad. After actually opening the game up, I was greeted by You're Gonna Go Far Kid by The Offspring, blaring loudly, and also this cool little custom main menu background. This song is copyright claimed by YouTube, so I can't play the real version of this song, but it basically it sounds like this when you open up Gary's mod, you open up this build and, it's, and it plays this, it plays the real, it, it plays the, the As far as maps, it pretty much only had default Gmod maps and Counter-Strike source maps mounted, but there was this custom one called GMPS Huge Flat Construct, which you can probably guess what that entails. Upon loading the map, which took like 10 years because again, I was playing on a laptop from 2005, I was greeted by this silly ass voice. Welcome to Huge Flat Construct. Please deposit one baby into the Aperture Science Payment Collection tub before entering. Thank you, and goodbye. I cannot tell you how long it's been since I've played on a Gmod map that talks to me in a scary GLaDOS voice. The map wasn't really anything special, but there was a good amount of odd Russian add-ons installed in this copy of Gmod that made playing on it fairly fun. Honestly, I didn't realize how nostalgic it would be to play a pirated copy of Gary's Mod on the lowest possible settings with a frame rate under 30, but just exploring this copy of Gmod on a map that I wasn't familiar with weirdly brought back a lot of good memories. It was basically just classic GM construct with this huge extended flat section in the middle, as well as this canal that went all the way down the side of the map so you could traverse it in an airboat. The colors were weirdly saturated, and it honestly didn't even feel like GM construct anymore, but the vibes that this map brought were undeniably very classic. This copy of the game did seem to have wire mod installed, which is easily one of the most popular Gmod add-ons to ever exist, but I never really knew how to use wire mod, and I definitely wasn't going to learn today, so I decided to just spawn in this weird metal thing, which started to spin around in the air for no reason. I, I don't know why it's doing this. And as I stared at this strange, rotating metal device, while my laptop made jet engine noises, I began to wonder when the last time anyone had actually even played this build of Gmod was. It was entirely possible that I was the first person to actually sit down and play this version of the game in like a decade, which was really, really weird to think about. Anyways, I hit the stupid ass metal thing with a crowbar and then went back to the map list where I found this. An old Gmod game mode created by Gary Newman called Melon Racer, where you, believe it or not, race a melon. For whatever reason, the waypoint that points you to the next checkpoint is a baby, which I mean, I don't know why that is, but basically the gist of the game is you try to complete this racetrack as a melon as fast as possible, while this little baby doll guides you where to go. Which is cool. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary Newman. That was pretty much all that this bootleg version of Gmod had to offer, which is weird because judging by the deranged-ass title menu, I thought it'd be chock-full of weird mods, but it really just wasn't. Still, it was a lot of fun hopping around an 11-year-old version of Gary's mod on a shitty laptop, and it made me remember why I chose to make this video in the first place. Oh, uh, also, here are the contents of the screenshots folder of this build, all dated September 2012. Lucky for me, there's no hate symbols that I have to blur out in this one, so that's, that's a nice touch. The next bootleg build is called Gary's Mod 12 SSR, and I have no doubt in my mind that it's going to have the most content, considering the download was 40 whole gigabytes. 
I was honestly a little bit confused as to what the hell this build even was, but I realized that this is actually a pretty recent bootleg of Gary's Mod 12 that includes an archive of the Gmod toy box. If you're unfamiliar with the Gmod toy box, it was a cloud-based system that existed in Gmod 12 that allowed users to spawn in community-created weapons, maps, and entities on the fly. Think of it like an in-game version of the Steam Workshop. Anyways, considering this build was a somewhat complete and total archive of Gmod Toy Box, the first thing I noticed was that it had a mind-boggling amount of content. Seriously, there was well over 100 maps in this thing, and it was honestly a bit overwhelming considering I knew that there was just no chance that I could feasibly play all of these. I decided I'd just pick maps at random and play around with the most interesting part of the build, the Toy Box Weapons and Entities. These are community-created tools, weapons, and NPCs from the Golden Age of Gary's Mod that probably haven't seen the light of day in a while. Honestly, I was having way too much fun messing around with the intervention from Modern Warfare 2 and, and shoop the whooping Kleiner NPCs. Do you know how long it's been since I've shoop the whooped a guy? It's, it's, been like, it's been like 10 years, okay? I noticed pretty early on in the playing around with this build that for some reason it had a dismemberment mod installed that only worked on the player, which resulted in some pretty brutal ass deaths, especially when old Dr. Hacks chucked a computer monitor at my head. To call this build of Gary's Mod a time capsule is almost an understatement. It's probably the closest the world will ever get to being able to travel back in time directly to the year 2010. I know it's not a traditional bootleg because it was created in 2016, well after Gmod 12's time had come and gone, but it's a lot of fun to boot up a version of Gmod that's pretty much frozen in time like this, and I commend whoever put this cool ass thing together because it's just really fun. Just to show you everything it has to offer, here are some highlights of this pack. There's a bunch of weapon mods, like super tactical rifles, all the way to wacky stuff like laser guns, miniguns, and gauss rifles. There's also a gun that spawns in a giant meteor storm, and this cool ass weapon called an earth shaker that is probably the closest thing that Gmod has ever had to a Skyrim spell. As far as NPCs go, there weren't very many in this pack besides Dr. Hacks himself and a weird self-multiplying Diglett thing, which is... whatever. It's Diglett. There was this little entity called Friendly Gnome, which when you spawn in is just that, a friendly gnome. The catch is that he starts to stalk you around the map and tries to kill you when you aren't looking, which is cool. Whoever made this thing actually did a really good job because this little guy is scary as hell. You can throw him like 50 feet and then turn around and then bam, he's just, he's just there somehow. It's, it's crazy. As far as maps go, there are a lot of classic familiar ones in here, including some that people still play on to this day. But to be completely fair, there are also just a lot of poop maps. Remember, this is an archive of almost each and every map that was ever uploaded to the Gmod 12 toy box, so there really isn't a lot of quality control here. One map might be one of the greatest and most fun old maps in the history of Gmod, and the next is some 12-year-old shitty attempt at recreating his house in the Source Engine. Not that I'm complaining. That kind of whiplash is what makes Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod. Honestly, I forgot just how cool Gmod 12 actually was. I think when I look back on old Gmod versions, I'm somewhat blinded by nostalgia to an extent. Gmod 9 and 10 are kind of way too janky to actually feasibly play in 2023, but I think Gmod 12 strikes a perfect balance between the old Gmod and the new Gmod. And I'm honestly happy that this bootleg makes it possible to go back and play it again, because it really just might be the best version of Gary's Mod that they ever put out. It was honestly a lot of fun looking through these old builds of Gary's Mod. I definitely do not recommend you do any of this though if you value the security or safety of your computer. It's easy to forget just how much this game has changed in the past 15 years, and digging through what are basically digital Gmod time capsules is a good way to remember that Gary's Mod has been through quite a lot. It's also funny to think that, back in the day, this was pretty much my only experience with Gmod, and it took me a pretty long time to actually buy the game on Steam for real. I do kind of miss the days of digging through old forums and shady websites to find the best bootleg version of Gary's Mod with the coolest maps and the dopest add-ons, but I definitely don't miss getting in trouble over and over again because I kept downloading shady-ass Russian viruses onto the family computer. That, that, I do not miss. To YouTube, and to the people of Face Punch, this was all totally fake. I didn't actually download any pirated builds of Gary's Mod, it was all a complete and total illusion designed to trick the viewer. I love legally buying software. I, it's awesome. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Ratlobber. Peace. Life is short. Try to do something new every day. Dance.
Try to dance as much as you can. Try to connect to the silence of the sea. And whenever you can, try to give your body a good rest. And once in a while, try to surprise an old friend. I'm sorry. I know. 